The Australian Broadcasting Authority regulates commercial television broadcasts in Australia. In December 1995, it published the Australian Content Standard, Clause 9 of which, from 1998 onwards, sets a requirement that Australian programs make up at least 55% of all television broadcasts between 6am and midnight. A broadcaster in Australia must comply with this requirement if it wants to maintain its commercial television broadcasting license. The power of the ABA to make the Australian content standard came from Section 122 of the Broadcasting Services Act 1992, which reads that such standards were to relate to the Australian content of programs. Elsewhere in the legislation, Section 160 required the ABA to perform its functions in a manner consistent with Australia's international treaty obligations. One of these treaties was the Australia-New Zealand Closer Economic Relations Trade Agreement and the Trade and Services Protocol to that agreement. Article 4 of the protocol required Australia and New Zealand to grant access rights to each other's market no less favourable than those allowed to their own people and services provided by them. Consequently, the Trade and Services Protocol came into conflict with Clause 9 of the Australian Content Standard, since Australian programs took up more airtime than non-Australian programs, including those from New Zealand. This created a legal impediment that would disadvantage the New Zealand film and television industry in competing equally with Australian industry in the Australian market. Six New Zealand film and television companies, including Project Blue Sky Incorporated, brought an action in the federal court against the ABA, arguing that the Australian content standard was invalid because of its inconsistency with the Trade and Services Protocol. Justice Davies of the federal court declared the Australian content standard to be invalid to the extent that it was inconsistent with the protocol. The ABA appealed to the full court of the federal court, which set aside Justice Davies' ruling and upheld the validity of the Australian content standard. Project Blue Sky Incorporated appealed to the High Court. In a majority decision, the High Court reasoned that statutory construction is to construe the relevant provision so that it is consistent with the language and purpose of all the provisions of the legislation. The meaning of the provision must be determined by reference to the language of the instrument viewed as a whole. Where conflict appears to arise from the language of different provisions, the conflict must be alleviated as much as possible by adjusting the meaning of the competing provisions which will best give effect to the purpose and words of those provisions, whilst maintaining the unity of all the statutes provisions. Reconciling conflicting provisions will often require the court to determine which one is the leading provision and the subordinate provision, and which must give way to the other. However, the High Court also acknowledged that it is the duty of a court to give the words of a statutory provision the meaning that Parliament is taken to have intended them to have. In most cases, that meaning, that is, the meaning in law, will be the ordinary grammatical meaning of the provision. In the present case, the requirement under Section 160 to act consistently with Australia's international treaty obligations was a condition regulating the ABA's ability to exercise its statutory power under Section 122 of the Broadcasting Services Act. The High Court ruled that an act done in breach of a condition regulating the exercise of a statutory power is not necessarily invalid and of no effect. The question is whether there was a legislative purpose to invalidate any act that fails to comply with the condition, which can be ascertained by reference to the language of the legislation, its subject matter and objects, and the consequences for the parties if every act done in breach of the condition is held to be invalid. Section 160 concerned the policy of pursuing the goals of Australia's international obligations, which are often expressed in broad language. The language described goals to be achieved rather than rules to be obeyed. Reading the two provisions together, the ABA is required to promote Australian content in its standards only to the extent that they were consistent with Australia's international treaty obligations. However, this did not mean that the Australian content standard was invalid. Instead, the ABA breached Section 160. People affected by this breach will have cause to seek relief, such as injunction to prevent the unlawful conduct. The appeal was allowed, and the High Court declared that Clause 9 of the Australian content standard was unlawfully made.